Hello my dear friends, our topic for presentation today is Degenoileal Atresia and Stenosis and I am Dr. Arun Joseph P. Coming to the history of Degenoileal Atresia, the first description of Ileal Atresia was in 1684 by Gola. In 1800, an endrostemy for intestinal atresia was performed by Voisin and a bland and sudden classified intestinal atresia in 1889. 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. This is a bland and sudden. He was Sir Bland and Sutton. He's bland certain, he's one person. So his classification still holds true. Still holds true for he, in his classification. Most of the types of intestinal atresias were included. Only multiple atresia, even though he has mentioned it, he has just uh, not, not classified it as such. Otherwise, his classification system still holds with minor changes. In 1911, first successful anastomosis for intestinal atresia was performed by Fokens. And a year later, Spriggs told about the causality of intestinal atresia. Why, does there, is, why, is there, why there is intestinal atresia? That is what Spriggs told about. And Bernard demonstrated it in dogs. Bernard demonstrated the different types of intestinal atresia in pregnant dogs by performing in utero surgeries, which we will discuss. Now, in 1951, by 1951, our surgeries have grown that people started evaluating the survival of intestinal atresia. So, the and by now, the and by now in 1990s, by now and in 2000s, the survival rate of intestinal atresia has progressed from a dismal state of 20 to 30 percentage to approximately 90 percentage. Percentage. And if at all, may the ch child die, it may be due to the other associated complications rather than the anastomotic breakdown. How did he reach here? Now, the prevalence of intestinal atresia is around 2.9 cases per 10,000 live births. According to a study in Riley's Hospital for Children in Indianapolis, all the cases of intestinal atresia were learned from 1970 to 2004 and, it, and in it, it was found that 50% were jejunoileal, 44% were duodenal and 6% were colonic atresia. The average weight of the child was 2.7 kg and boys and girls were equally affected and there was no sex predilection. Coming to the etiology of intestinal atresia. Intestinal atresia. Etiology is due to the late intrauterine mesenteric vascular occlusion. So it is a late event and then a mesenteric vascular occlusion. We have we all know that in duodenal atresia it was due to the epithelial uh, recanalization defects. That that is in duodenal atresia by around the sixth week of gestation, the epithelium proliferates, epithelium proliferates and fills the bowel and then the recanalization happens after that the recanalization happens so if there is any defect in recanalization and the uh, some amount of uh, epithelium remains there like that some amount of epithelium remains there like that it causes atresia it causes atresia dual atresia but in dual atresia but in case of uh, Jejunal atresia, it is due to the mesenteric vascular occlusion. Let us see what happening, what is happening. So, this is the bubble in the, suppose this is the bubble in the fetus. The vessels get thrombosed or vessels get, the vessel, the blood supply get compromised in somehow. That can be due to volvulus, intussusception, internal herniation, tight anti abdominal wall defects. It can also be a familial problems of blood vessels. So, suppose there is in the area of no blood supply or the blood supply is minimum, there can be critical ischemia leading to irreversible changes and disintegration and finally to an atritic and finally to an atritic segment. Well, towards an atritic segment. So, what happens in the areas where the blood supply is precarious or the areas near it where the blood supply is not enough, there will be a relative ischemia which will result in an impaired function. 
so this area have defective proportion this area the proximal portion will be dilated and there will be early necrosis the vessels here will be very thin or a friable walls for these vessels so this area has defective propulsion so even if and this area is also defective due to the decreased vascularity in early period the anastomosis was done between this area and this area which resulted in failure of anastomosis because due to the defective propulsion due to the defective propulsion the anast there was a functional blockage which resulted in the breakdown of anastomosis which was the cause for the dismal results in early atresias so how did we know about it it was by the study of bernard in bernard said bernard what did bernard do uh bernard tied the vessels of this dogs we have, uh, of the dogs we have already seen about the dog uh, dogs picture the bernard tied the vessels of this dogs in the in utero time the, so what happens when the puppy is born he demonstrated almost all the types of intestinal atresia by the different ligature method different liga ligation of the different bob different vessels in the in utero period of dogs so he was doing a fetal surgery in dogs and it was successful and this helped in understanding the etiology and understanding the methods of surgery which is which was used for intestinal atresia later on now coming to the familial causes can intestinal atresia be familial yes it can be a, it was in certain cases it can be familial it is generally seen in multiple atresia syndrome and apple peel in apple peel atresia generally familial intestinal atresias when there is a familial component they show a pattern in multiple atresia syndrome the rotation is uniformly normal rotation is normal but it is there is a high lit, high lethality for that kind that multiple atresia syndrome in case of apple peel atresia the proximal atresia is typically at the duodeno jejunal junction and almost uh, always associated with mal rotation generally familial intestinal atresias are autosomal recessive